Hi, I'm Mike Swain. Welcome to Complete Judo. This final tape in the series will concentrate on counters and combinations. An essential part of judo is to learn effective counters. In order to counter someone, you must first be balanced, have a good grip, and have a good posture standing straight up. Only by mastering these three elements can you then effectively surprise any opponent. Uchimata countered by Iskashi. As your opponent enters into Uchimata, simply sidestep him by bringing your knees together and keeping your foot on the ground, moving into a Taiotoshi. It's important to control the right grip in order to pull up and finish the throw. This throw is most effective when you keep your body relaxed and as your opponent comes in, simply just move your hips and not your whole body. It's a very effective throw and a surprising throw. If done properly, your opponent will feel as though he has thrown himself. Let's take a look from the overhead. Another variation of Uchimata Skashi is to ride your opponent. As he comes in, you lift your leg as high as you can, controlling his upper body, simply turn him onto his back. Let's look at the footwork. Again, as he enters, I lift my leg high, pulling in his right arm as fast and as quick as possible. Try to guide him over with your left hand, pushing right in below the ear and controlling his head. Osoto Gari, countered by Osoto Gaishi. This is a move that's learned by all judo beginners. As your opponent comes in for Osoto Gari, simply step back and turn your body, driving your opponent down to the ground. Timing is the key. Before you step back, it's important to keep your body straight and block his incoming osoto. Once you've blocked it, then you can turn and try to take him back. Notice when I block it, my foot moves back slightly, my left foot. When I feel my opponent's off balance, then I turn and reverse him. Controlling the upper body is really important because you need that to finish. Although it looks simple, be very careful to block first, otherwise you'll end up being thrown and not your opponent. Dashi Barai, countered by Tsubami Gaish. In this reverse foot sweep, simply lift your leg straight back and counter your opponent's incoming foot sweep. Try to make a circular motion with your toe pointed and quickly come back with a foot sweep. It's important not to raise your knee and give the throw away. By not making big movements, you're surprising your opponent and he never sees the counter. Again in slow motion. Notice how I catch the rear leg as I follow through with the sweep. He's a Guruma countered by Kouchi Gardi. Timing is the key to this counter. As your opponent comes in for his Hizagaruma, simply drive forward 
controlling both your sleeve hand and your lapel hand. Notice how he comes in, I'm driving my right hand straight into his hip, and my collar hand is basically clotheslining him or controlling his chin so he can't turn. The off balancing is straight back. Ochigari countered by Hiza Garuma. The most important thing in this counter is to keep your back straight and your body relaxed. As your opponent attacks, simply side step and sweep. It's important to control the grip with both hands and guide him using your wrists and your leg. Let's look at it from a different angle. Notice in slow motion, as he attacks, my leg is straight and my hands guide him to the mat. Kosoro Garei, countered by Uchimata. This throw works best against a left-sided versus a right-sided opponent. As he commits to his Kosoro Gari, make sure that you pull your pulling hand in as tight as possible. Upper body control is the key. If you don't have control of your pulling hand, he is going to complete his throw and you'll be falling backwards. Make sure your right foot is pointed a little bit to the right, off center, so that your balance is maintained as he tries his Kosoro Gari. Notice the upper body control as I complete the throw. Kosoro Gake countered by Tayo Toshi. Balance is key. As your opponent attacks, make sure you step back and balance yourself first before you come in for the Tayotoshi. If you don't take that little step back, he's going to complete his throw. Again, in slow motion, he comes in, I step back, plant my foot, and then come in for Tayotoshi. From another angle. Notice again, he comes in, plant, and throw. The pulling hand is really important because it controls your opponent and puts him in the right direction. Uchimata, countered by Kosoro Gake. In this technique, again, you have to have your own body balanced before you can throw him. As he comes in, hip check or stop the Uchimata first, and then you can reverse him with the Kosoro Gaku. It's important to control, again, the upper body with both hands to make this throw work. As he comes in, I block, and then I'm hooking his leg and basically going in a circle and then driving back. Keep that right hand low. Look at it in close up, hook, and drive back. Hiza Guruma, countered by Okuri Ashibarai. As my opponent attacks his Hizaguruma, turn your foot slightly out to block it, and then I come back with a simple foot sweep. 
to try to knock his one foot into his other foot. Posture is really important, and the power comes from your hip, not just your foot. Once I stop his technique, basically he's off balance in the other direction. I just have to take the right timing and use my pulling arm as a guide. This is classic judo, as you use little effort to throw your opponent and let him basically throw himself. Osorogari countered by Sumio Toshi. A classic judo technique from early judo days, as my opponent attacks his Osorogari, I simply turn and redirect his body to let him throw himself. It's important that I control the upper body. The lapel hand is going to pull down, and my right pulling arm is going to redirect and push up. The quicker I bring my left leg back, the more effective the throw will be. Again, let's look at my right hand. As I control, I push up and make a circle. My left hand is going to pull down. Timing is the key to this throw. In my opinion, it's very important in judo to have a strong forward throw and a strong rear throw. This way, when you attack, your opponent is caught off guard and reacts in certain ways that set up your second and third throws. Combinations need to be practiced in the gym every single day, just as Uchikomi or Randori, in order to become effective. Ochigari to Kouchigari. Some of my favorite techniques, these two throws work together very easily by just controlling the upper body with your pulling hand and your lapel. In detail, basically, you're hooking one leg and then switching to the other. Let's look at the footwork. As I attack Ochigari, my opponent puts all his weight on the other foot, so I switch to Kouchigari. It's important to keep my body as close as possible to his body in order to control him and to keep him moving backwards. Notice the control I have with my right hand as I attack Ochi and Kochi, I'm pushing his arm into his side. Ochi Gari to Ippon Seonage. Because we're changing directions, it's important as I attack my Ochi Gari to snap my wrist forward or pull him forward. As he moves forward, then I attack the seonage. Again, snap your wrist forward, and then you can drop in for the seoi. Notice when I come in, my feet are shoulder width apart as I turn and look toward the ground. Slow motion, snap forward, and come in. Ochigari to Tayotoshi. This move is probably the most 
Effective move for me. I scored the most pawns with it. As I come in for Ochigari, I'm changing directions, so I have to snap him forward before my Taotoshi is going to work. My right hand or pulling arm, it's important to keep it as high as possible. As he's going over, then I pull down. Let's look at it from the left. Attack, pull up, and then down. It's important again to keep my body as close as possible so that it causes him to react or push back. From here you can see the snapping motion, my right hand pulling forward and then down. Ochigari to Osotogari. Timing is the key here. As I attack my Ochigari, he's going to step back with his left foot. My right foot has to be a little bit past his foot. This causes him to be off balanced and makes the throw very easy to finish. Again, in slow motion, I take a big step and then down. Notice how close I am to his body. My left wrist also, as I attack my Ochi, snapping forward to cause a reaction. Look at it from the overhead. Attack, stay close as possible, and finish the move. Ochi Gari to Osoto Gari to Kosoto Gari. Based on the last move, all we're doing here is finishing the throw with a kosotogari. As I step with my ochi and then follow into an osotogari, he's going to react and try to counter my move. That's when I reap his back foot with kosotogari. Before he has even time to step back and counter it, I take away his foot. Keep the momentum going backwards and never let up on the pressure, keeping your body very close to his. It's slow motion. As he steps back, I step forward and counter with Kosoto Gari. Uchigari to Uchimata. This throw works best against a left versus right-handed player. Because his right foot is forward, I can attack a hooking Uchigari and slide my hip in for Uchimata. Notice how my right foot kind of hops in after the Uchigari, right here. It's important to pull forward with your right hand, pull up high to keep him off balance. Bend your left knee as much as possible as you come in with your Ochigari in order to lower your hips and make the Uchimada effective. Again, this is a great move against a person who is extreme right-sided.
Coach Gary to Ikon Seonage. Similar to Ochigari, I'm changing directions. Therefore, again, as I attack Kochigari, I have to snap forward and make sure my opponent takes a step or at least reacts and pushes forward before I attack my opponent Seori. Many people try to do this in a continuous motion and often get countered because they're not stopping and pulling back first before they attack the Ippon Seonage. Slow motion, Kochi snap back, keep your back straight and your knees bent. Ippon Seonage to Kochi Gari. The reverse of the move we just saw, the same throw works as I attack Seonage, my opponent reacts backwards, therefore backing up on his heels. And then I come back with a kouchigari. The key to making this throw work is the fact that I turn my head as I come in seonage, watch I turn away, this causes a reaction, and then I apply the kouchigari. Also my pulling hand is pulling forward first and then snapping back. The direction of the throw is straight back and not to the side. Therefore, you have to throw your shoulder into his mid-chest in order to be effective. Again, look at my head as it snaps. I look away and then I look forward right into him. Kousoro gari to deashibarai. Again, a classic judo timing move. As I enter into Kosorogare, he steps back and I simply catch his right foot and push it into his left foot. Although the move looks like it's a foot technique only, the timing or the control of my upper body is very important. When I attack my Kosorogare, I'm pushing with my left hand to make him move back and then I'm following through with my right hand to control for the foot sweep. Posture is really important also, because in foot sweeps, your hip is really where your power comes from. If your body's bent over, you have no power. If your body's straight up, you have a lot of power. Hizaguruma to Osotogari. I consider this one of the best combinations in Judo. Hizaguruma simply turns his body around 180 degrees and then I've stepped forward into my Osotogari. Again, it's important to control his upper body and to guide him as he turns the 180 degrees, push forward with my pulling arm and follow through with Osorogari. As he steps back, I need to step exactly with him and keep my right foot close to his left foot. You can see here in slow motion, as he steps back, I step forward right there. That is what off-balances him and creates the throw.
Osotogari to Sase Surikomiyashi. In this technique, as I lift my left knee up, basically I'm going to pivot on my right foot and change directions to Sasai. The key to making this throw work is to fake him by lifting your knee as high as possible and pivoting your right foot quickly. Also important is to control the upper body. As I attack my osoto, I'm going to pull back or snap my wrist with my lapel hand in order to pull him forward. It's a great move to use against a left-sided person versus left side or right to right. Osotogari to Harai Goshi. In this move, my opponent stops my Osotogari by hip checking or blocking with his hip. When I feel him do that, I change direction slightly forward and apply the Harai Goshi. It's important that you change directions and not continue with the Osotogari in the same direction. Notice the pause as I attack, he's going to stop my technique. Only then can I apply the Harai Goshi. If you try to force it, then you'll end up being countered yourself. So you're basically moving from a rear throw to a forward throw. Controlling the upper body is very important. You must keep chest contact and the pulling arm, my right hand, has to pull up and away. In slow motion, I attack, he stops my move, and then I switch forward. Tomonage to Osotogare. The key to making this move effective is to quickly raise your knee as high as possible to fake that you're coming in for Tomonage. At that point, your opponent is going to react backwards, and that's when you come in for Osotogare. This is a quick and very effective move to use in competition. Notice also I use my upper body to pull up when I fake the Tomonage. And this enhances his reaction. Notice also how I drive my left arm over the top of his body and try to capture his head to control it as much as possible. Sore Surikomi Goshi to Harai Goshi. The key to this throw is to keep my balance after my first technique. This enables me to raise my leg and finish the throw. By keeping my back straight, my knees bent, my opponent is unable to counter me, 
and I can complete or counter with another throw. Drive the sleeve arm as high as possible, keeping your opponent on his toes, and then apply the harai goshi to finish him off. Notice how I kick my left leg straight and pop just about at the knee level to take his legs out. Ippon Seonage to Seoi Toshi. In this throw, as my opponent stops my Ippon Seonage, I basically just drop to a lower level and complete the throw. My left leg is going to drop just behind my opponent's leg, trapping it, and then my whole body completes the throw by dropping forward. It's important to lower your left shoulder once you've come in for the first technique, lower your left shoulder and your opponent will just fall diagonally right over it. Keep a tight grip with your shoulder locked into your opponent's chest. As he stops your first move, just drop down and finish the move. Dashibarai to Hizaguruma. In this technique, I'm keeping my back straight and my knees bent. As I apply the Dashibarai, I'm going to pivot with my right foot and complete the throw into Hizaguruma. It's important to turn in a circular motion, keeping your opponent off balance at all times. Also important is my upper body. Notice how close I am chest to chest. If your body is too far away, there's no power and you will be unable to complete the Hizaguruma. Slow motion, again, turn in a circular motion and complete the throw. Uchimata to Kouchigari. As I apply the Uchimata, my opponent blocks with his hips. That causes his foot to step forward slightly. I simply take out his foot in the direction that his toes point. Notice how my foot is still planted on the uchimata. I simply move it over and take the foot out or sweep it in the direction of his toe. It's important to commit also to the uchimata in order for him to react. If I don't commit 100% on my first technique, the second technique or the combination is not gonna work. That's true in all combinations. 
control his head also. Notice how I pull his head forward using my forearm. This really causes a reaction for him to lift his head up. As he lifts his head up is when I sweep. Hizagaruma to Harai Goshi. Another classic judo technique. As I apply the Hizagaruma, my opponent comes in a 180 and reacts in the other direction. The timing is the key to this move. Notice how I catch the Harai Goshi as my opponent is still moving backwards. I drive the one leg into the other. Upper body control again is key to making these all combinations work. Keeping my back straight allows me the power to follow through with the Harai Goshi. Hizagaruma to Deashi Barai. Just like in Harai Goshi, as I apply the Hizagaruma, my opponent is still moving backwards. That's the correct time to sweep the one foot into the other. It's important to use my upper body or my control of a lapel to pull him in a circle. And then my follow through comes with my hikite or my pulling arm. Again, keep your back straight and the power comes from the hips. This is a very quick and effective move. Again, timing is key. Harai Goshi to Osotogari. The key here is to keep your balance and also keep upper body control. As I come in for the Harai Goshi, my opponent blocks and I simply turn the direction to the rear or to where he is off balanced. Again, I have to wait for the right moment because if he blocks me, and I go too soon, he's gonna counter me. The key is to be patient and wait for the correct timing to do the combination and follow through with the also togari. Notice how I lock his knee with my left foot. This keeps him off balance until I follow through with the Osotogari. Ippon Seoinage to Tani Otoshi. A dynamic throw that often catches your opponent completely by surprise. As I enter into my Ippon Seonage, I simply slide my leg behind my opponent's both legs and complete the throw. 
Notice how I drive my opponent straight back, keeping my shoulder in his chest. Controlling the right lapel is the key not to get countered by my own move. Thank you for joining us on our tape series. We hope that this information will prove valuable whether you're coaching, teaching, or competing. 